ex tempore, o mores, or something like that. I was struck this week by a couple of different things that made me realize how grateful I am for my education. In particular, although not exclusively, uh, to, for the education I received for one brief year at a little humanities school called New St. Andrews out in Idaho. Christian college, great books sort of thing. And there, more than anywhere else, even in just one year, I was made to do something uh, that, uh, well, I've just, uh, most people aren't made to do. I was made to practice the art of rhetoric. That I was made to speak in public. And I had spoken in public before. I had a much more practice later on. Uh, but it was there that it was most studied, focused, and concentrated in time as well, where I got the most practice. This week, three different things, which I'm not going to enumerate to you, except to tell you there were three, uh, made me realize that this is something I kind of take for granted. It's, it's one of those things that, that people often ascribe to personality. Oh, well, he has such an outgoing personality. Y'all, as with most people, most people, what you see is a mask, is a creation, is an artifice. And that's not deception. That's just how it be, y'all. And the mask, the artifice that you see includes some training and rhetoric and some degree of comfort with being in front of people. Not total comfort, but some degree of comfort, which is way more than most people are trained for these days because rhetoric is a dirty word and people's feelings ought to be considered, and no one, very few people I should say, likes to be thrown in front of a crowd to sink or swim. I realized this week that just with fresh knowledge, as I saw the terror in, 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 in some people's eyes, that uh, being told, hey, you're gonna have to talk in five minutes, or Hey, we can't find the notes for your speech is a huge crisis for a lot of people, but it doesn't need to be. And I'm not telling you that I'm the best. I will tell you that I went on the Joffrey the Giant tour recently, and the first couple of times I gave a little talk, uh, they were really pretty iffy. And the first time I tried to go really kind of off the cuff, meh, kind of mediocre. I am not a gifted public speaker. What I am saying, though, is that people should have the basic training to deliver something mediocre at a moment's notice. Can you do that? Can you deliver something? Can you be told, we need someone to give a toast, please do something? And I guess there are two things that you need to develop there. One, you need to develop the art of rhetoric. And the other is you need to learn not to get embarrassed. And I have embarrassed myself often enough. But I think that's, that's part of the art of rhetoric, right? You just, you just throw yourself out there often enough that you become somewhat inured or able to overcome the embarrassment a little bit. And that's, I mean, I'm saying all this as someone who, who, depending on the context, might still get a little bit of the shakes, a little bit of the heebie-jeebies. I have a wheelhouse. I have a comfort area, just like you do. But... If you are a man watching this channel, or a woman for that matter, although only 3% of my viewers are women, consider that you should seek out opportunities to practice thy rhetoric, to give some talks, to give some speeches. And if you're going into a field like the pastorate where this even that's necessary, 
get outside of preaching. Y'all, we live in a dark age of preaching, even amongst those who are expository preachers and faithful to the scriptures. Y'all, rhetoric is an important part of preaching. St. Augustine stands with me. I don't think you're going to want to stand against me. Maybe you will. Put something in the comments telling me I'm wrong, and let's have a royal kerfuffle. Y'all, thanks for watching. Peace be upon you.